Want to win money on sports? With Underdog, you can up to a thousand times your cash just by picking higher or lower on your favorite player stats. Millions of fans have won billions of dollars on Underdog. Will you be next? Download the Underdog app and sign up to get a free pick with your first cash entry up to a thousand dollars in bonus cash when you deposit. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama, Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Arizona, 1 800 Next Step, 1 800 639 8783, or text Next Step to 53342 New York. Call the 24 7 Hope Line at 1 877 Hope NY or text Hope NY 467 369. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, no, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I'd only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. <clears throat> This is the Weekly Scramble, a place where we chat about life over a cold one or two. It's time to belly up to the pod with Mike Fratelloni and your host, Chris Reavers. That's right. Looky, looky. Look who's gone digital here on the Weekly Scramble. My name is Chris Reavers by my side normally, but now joining me in a fancy new way is Mike Fratelloni with Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores. Hi, Hi, Michael. I'm good. I'm good. You are in your comfy office. I'm in the studio. This is cool. We're, yeah, I don't like it. What's I'm going to tell you. I mean, this is totally cool. I like being able to do this, but I also like being by you. Of course. I like to see, because you do a lot of uh, kind of spit take comedy too, like, you know, where you <laughs> spit out water and you trip on things. Yes. Like old time comedians. And I, it, and I can see you, right? At least I can see you, but I can't get the full blast of a spit take right. shot my way. Right. You know? Um, so I have so much stuff for you today, and you obviously do. we have such little time, but I have to start with this. And I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't give this to Joe because I wanted to do this on our show. All right. Oh, nice. Okay. So last night, we, uh, I think, you know, I was going back and forth between watching MLB playoffs. I know I'm one of the six people that still watches the Major League Baseball playoffs between that and the and the Monday night football game. And so we were going kind of back and forth because once the I wanted to make sure that the Yankees were going to lose. And then once that was secured, then I devoted all my attention to the football game before I went to bed. And I got to tell you, I really didn't have a horse in the race in the AFC. I have really, really, really started to hate the Chiefs. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not just Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. It's not just Brittany Mahomes and Patrick Mahomes' uh brother that's kind of a clown it's just the whole thing you know what I mean and again they're good I'm not going to take that away from them but you kind of get as a sports fan you kind of get sick of certain dynasties we went through that with the Patriots right well I just mentioned one the Yankees did you hear the latest you didn't get sick of the Patriots I I did not I did not I I loved and in fact that's my my youngest son's favorite players Tom what was Tom Brady but didn't he Tom kind of kept it on the down low Tried to. Right. He yeah, wasn't. He but, wasn't as much. Okay, but when you're but one ahead. of the biggest stars in the biggest sport on the planet, it's yeah. pretty tough to keep a low profile, which I completely Absolutely. understand. Yeah. But did you see the latest news concerning the Kansas City Chiefs? I did not. Bravo, you know the network Bravo. I do. Oh no! Please has God, just no. reportedly started a plan for a reality show featuring girlfriends of Kansas City Chiefs players. Hmm. Are they going to call this the what? Housewives of Kansas City just yet? Question mark. Sure, Bravo has had the real Housewives franchise in cities like New York, Washington, D.C., Dallas, Salt Lake, and Maryland. And yeah, the network reportedly is filming this reality show in Kansas City. That's according to People Magazine, Michael, which said the Bravo show will have a chief's tie to it. Bravo is currently filming a reality show about the WAG supporting the back-to-back Super Bowl winners, people wrote, while the show is only in development and the cast list has yet to be officially determined, it will potentially include Nicole Hardman Jr.'s fiance. He's a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Uh, Her name is Shariah Gordon. Um, Shauna Weathersby, who shares two kids with defensive tackle Chris Jones. (sighs) 
Did they say it? What a way, what a weird way to write that. Shares two kids. Well, I think that's a it's a nice way of saying she's Chris Jones's baby mama. Is like, yeah, but and wouldn't you say has two kids with Chris Jones? When I, what did I say? No. Oh, shares. Shares two shares kids. Two like, kids. Yeah, you're well, right. Let's share those two kids together. Like it's uh, uh, like it's an SUV. Yeah, we share yeah, that. Yeah, it, right. it just seems weird that you'd say um, this is going to be huge. Let me just keep. Yeah, let me keep going. Okay. So there's still lots to figure out, including who will be part of the final cast and whether there's enough there to build a full series around it. It's very much a work in progress. A source told People Magazine. Another source in the People story said a pilot was filmed in the off season. And the football players made very minor appearances. Kansas City current co-owner Brittany Mahomes uh, reported... Wait, Kansas City wait, current, current co-owner? I don't know what that means. Brittany Mahomes reportedly wasn't not in the show. Gordon and Weathersby have been spotted in an Arrowhead Stadium suite with another girlfriend of a Chiefs player. Uh, maybe you've heard of her, Taylor Swift. There is no mm. word whether or not Taylor Swift will be a part of it. And I got to say this. I highly doubt that she will because... Why would she do that? Well, A, why would she do it? And B, Bravo would have to pay her a billion dollars to, yeah, to, to do it. Everyone um, else is doing it for thirty five grand an episode. She'd say, yeah, I need $14 million, right. or why would I walk across the street to do it? This is exactly what Joe has been predicting for years about the NFL turning into a quasi-reality show. Well, they're not even trying to hide it anymore because... Yeah. I get it. They're 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 probably the most popular team going right now in the NFL, and they're obviously they have been the most successful team the last half decade. But who in God's name is going to watch this? Every single woman in America. You first. think so? Are you kidding me? Oh, I'll wake up at <laughs> I get up real early, and I'll walk in, and I'll uh, sometimes my wife gets out of bed because she just hates laying next to me. Sure, right? sure. I assume that must be it, and I'll go into the living room. And she'll have Bravo on. Bravo's on almost all day in her house. She doesn't watch TV all day. I, I, don't get me wrong. But she'll be there with Bravo playing in the background. So much so that I've seen the episodes that are on. I'm like, oh, I've seen this one where the girl pushes over the table. And I don't watch that channel. But it's so ubiquitous in my household that I know what's happening there. Right? So it is 100% going to be huge. Okay. In fact... Hmm, let me see. I think there is some law of unattended consequences here because they may just may show what complete a holes athletes can be because athletes have been used to getting their way for a very, mm -hmm. very long time, especially the, the bigger mo uh, athletes with more notoriety. They can, that being said, I'm sure there's some great ones, right? I'm sure there's sure. some great, nice guys, but I think there's a whole bunch of people who are like, okay, yeah. Um, Honey, I don't care. I'm going out. Where's he going? Oh, he's at the strip joint. And then there's going to be that drama that their boyfriend's at the strip joint. And uh, this chick shares two children with him. And she's going to be all mad. So she needs to grab Brittany Mahomes and two other gals and go down and confront him. Okay. Not this is going to be somewhat of a left turn, but just hang with me here, okay? And I developed this thought last night watching the game. And it stems from a couple of different times where, because of course, anytime she's in, I'm talking about Taylor now, mm -hmm. anytime she's seen in the state or she's in the stadium, she's going to be captured on video, right? That's just going to happen. Oh. Yep. I'm going to tell you this right now. Hang with me. I feel sad for her. I'm going to tell you why. This whole, and I'm going to call it arrangement with what's his name? The big goon, mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey. You know what this is for her? Because... She became basically a star as a teenager, right? As a very, sure. as what, a 13 or 14 year old, however old she was. Not even younger, maybe, yeah. This, was, this is her being able to live out the high school life as now a 33 year old, right? Where she's she dating did, the, she the didn't captain get, of the football she's team. She's dating the captain of the football team because she didn't get to do that in high school because mm -hmm. she was too busy you know, becoming the megastar that she is now. That's what this is all about. I've, I've thought it was kind of a, I mean, sure, if they're in love, let them be in love. Who, what do I care? It doesn't, it, it doesn't affect my life whatsoever, but that's exactly what this is. This is her do saying. Do you think there's any validity to that? This is all a stage thing? And that, Oh, I think there's some of that for sure. I mean, he look at what he's been able to do and been able to um, build upon with his podcast with his brother. I mean, that's. He's making more money, I think, doing that than playing football right now. Maybe I got Are the numbers serious? wrong. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. They signed a mega deal for their podcast, and it's only because she happens to be Taylor Swift's boyfriend. I mean, that's the main reason why. I mean, 
I, I'm a huge football fan. I don't give two hoots what those two guys have to say about anything. I'm not going to mm-hmm. listen to their show, but sure. other people do, right? Other people you know, do want to listen to that. So I think that that's a big part well, of what I think a lot of people is. do. You know, I'm, I'm getting pissed. Why? We've had this show for 10 years. <laughs> we are extremely successful. No one has come up and offered us a mega deal. Right. And I'm going to probably, um, what was that show that you were talking about on GL yesterday? The, uh, the chicks one that Kamala call, was on. Call me daddy. Call me daddy. Right. This girl, she has big guests, but she is super dirty. She is super dirty. And she became famous just the same way we became famous. She was on the very popular uh, podcast and she was in a different stream, just like we're in Garage Logic stream. Right. Sure. So she took that stream that had millions of downloads, just like GL, and she jumped in and created a stream that has millions of downloads, just like we've had. We've had millions of downloads, right? Maybe not this week, but we've had millions of downloads. And no one's offered us 110 million bucks. Right. Unless you're holding out on me. Right. Are you uh, yeah. Are you holding out on me? I'm Did Scrooge McDuck swimming in my yes. sea of cash at home. That's exactly what I'm doing. I really don't get that. So they go out and they buy these people like like the Kelsey brothers and like this call me daddy podcast host hostess right and they get these huge stars and they get deals for 110 million bucks but their numbers aren't that much different than GL's in fact GL beats a bunch of them well perhaps in some cases but I I mean now when she has the president on right she's gonna right I I guess there's always going to be something else that somebody has that you always want to attain, right? That's just always, that's yeah, 110 the, that's, million bucks. That's exactly <laughs> what they have that I want to attain. That's I, exactly it. But I, I, again, I don't, I don't hold it against call, call me daddy gal for, for having that type of fame. I mean, go get it. I got nothing against you for going out and making, making your own little, you know, your, your, your audience and whatnot. I guess the point, the point that I was just trying to make was there's Mike, I came to grips with this a long time ago. Some people's cup of tea isn't going to be for me, and that's just fine. Sure. But, but you know, I, and I can't lose sleep over the fact that this gal created this empire basically overnight. And I'm not talking about Swift. I'm talking about Call Me Daddy. Is it Alex Cooper? Is Alex Cooper, yeah. You know, and, and again, I, I well, okay, cool. I, you know, because Joe gets, well, he turns here's the thing. to the vice president and asks, name one thing. I mean, just name one thing that the government tells a man to do. Right. Just name one thing. It's like, if that's the level of questioning she has to the vice president just to prove that she wants everyone to have abortions, yep. something's wrong. Because if Kamala could have said, well, that's a little unfair because we had something called the draft and hundreds of thousands of men have gone to their death in the United States on the rule of the federal government, right? Yep. That that was not their choice. And the, those who chose not to go went to jail, right? It wasn't that easy. And to, to have the audacity to ask such a stupid question and to get that notoriety and to get the VP, what we should do is we should call Kamala, 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 <laughs> sure. I can't remember which one's right now, and see if she'll do our show and we can ask her some questions, some I'm, real good ones. I'm going to doubt she'll accept the invitation, but it's worth a shot know. anyway. You know, okay. it's, it is worth a shot. So you don't yeah. buy my you don't buy my Taylor Swift, this is her living out her high school thing you don't buy that no i think you're really astute i I really do reverse i think that absolutely could be it she's experiencing some fun i don't wish her any ill sure i think she's an amazing star and she's done some amazing amazing things i would love to have less of her yes right big time i don't care she's she's too much now and i think i'm losing it like i'm just i no longer care what she has to do. I no longer care if she makes another song. I no longer care if she's there. The Kelsey boys, I have zero care for. Oh, who cares? Right, right. They, they seem like a couple of fine guys, but I don't care. Right. I don't know. But Taylor, I don't, you think she's attractive just between us? Uh, I don't get it. I don't, she's okay. Here's the other p- the part too, where when you see, like, for instance, I'm going to, I'm going to say one specific example. When you saw them at the U S open, right? The tennis court, mm-hmm. And they're and they're sitting there singing. It really looked like she was driving him nuts because yeah. it was clear that she was probably not sober. I'm just making an assumption, mm-hmm. but she's mm-hmm. kind of dancing and singing along, and she's she knows damn well that every camera in the building is on her, right? And it just seems like, boy, I bet she's a lot. 
I bet she's a lot yeah, to deal a with. A little yeah. high maintenance. And again, I, I, kind I, of feel, fun to date a billionaire. I feel the same way about uh, Mahomes' gal, too. I think she's even worse, to be honest with oh, you. Yeah. Um, because at least at least Taylor has true talent, right? She's, correct. She's, she, it for she's self-made, right? Like At yeah. least she's the one that's kind of be, behind. But I'm getting kind of off, off course here. But I, I just, I don't care either. I, I, I truly, truly don't care. But to answer your question, not really, because it's all of the things that go along with it. Where, listen, for me, it, it, attractiveness is so much more than just the physical appearance of a woman. Are, are you a high are maintenance you, pain in the ass? Are you going to go to personality? No, no, I'm role? dead serious. Okay. I, I, yeah. I really do think that. I, I think that 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 weighs a lot into how someone is viewed, and 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 I guess. How my opinion shapes of someone completely, well, well, completely. I've always been. We that got way. very lucky because we have two beautiful, well, one hundred percent people in our yes, life yes. with fantastic personalities. Well, one hundred percent, right? No, no complaints about either one of them whatsoever. No, and when people say to us, "Oh, I, I see," you know, she married for love, and we married for looks, right? <laughs> and then I have to say, no, that's not it. I adore mine, and you adore yours. Correct. And she just happens to be beautiful. She just happens to be. Correct. A lot of frat packers and garage logicians probably are in the exact same boat as us. 100%. And I want to get to the frat pack here in a minute, but I got a really funny story to tell you about our friends at Harmony, Minnesota, Michael. So we all know Harmony Spirits, the best handcrafted spirits made right here in the great state of Minnesota in Harmony, Minnesota. Visit their website, harmonyspirits.net. But here's the greatest thing I heard this morning. So my mom calls me. We had to discuss a couple of matters, and she said, oh, I'm so bummed out. And I said, well, what do you, what's going on? She's like, well, our, our next door neighbors and you know, they live in the country. So next door means half a mile down the street, right? They're moving. And I said, oh no. She said, they're moving to Harmony, Minnesota. Are you kidding? And I said, you're kidding. And so the Otis family living down the street from my parents, um, really, really nice. They're around my age, great couple, three kids. They're just, they're wonderful neighbors to my parents. And I said, here, do me a favor, mom, send them this website. Let them know because I know I know he uh, is a guy that likes a, a nice glass of whiskey. He'll have a drink. Okay. And I said, I said, just send him this info. Tell him when they get down there to stop in at Harmony Spirits and introduce themselves. Yeah, we were Reavers' parents, next door neighbors. neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> and so I said, make sure you introduce them or have them introduce themselves to Larry and Damon, and they will be delighted that they moved to Harmony, Minnesota. And I thought that is. That ha- literally happened this morning. I said, well, I'm using this in my ad today for Harmony Spirits, Mom. I just I've not been know. down to Harmony, but it's not a big town in no. Metropolis. Uh-uh, no. So what, why are they moving? Are they running for they, something? No, they, yeah, right. They, <laughs> uh, I believe that they acquired land uh, in oh. in the area, and I think that they're going to end up building something down there. I think that that's what they're doing. Uh, but They anyway, no longer appreciated your parents' naked Tuesdays. I think like, that that was a big decision as to why they decided Faribault, Minnesota just wasn't going to cut it for them anymore. Sure. I think that did, inner city. Yeah, that did play a big role in it. So anyway, so I, <laughs> uh, we've got two new fans of Harmony Spirits and Harmony, Minnesota. Yeah. But yeah, uh, right. as we've been telling you guys to do for quite some time, please do us a favor. Go into your local liquor store and ask for the Harmony brand by name. That is how they continue to expand their brand, and it really helps them out, and we appreciate it very much. Uh, that's Frat. This is Reavers. We'll be right back. Underdog is the place to play if you're a sports fan looking to win money while watching sports. With over 5 million happy players and $2 billion won, Underdog makes it fun and easy to cash in on all your favorite athletes' performances. So you can make a play with only $1 or go big and win up to 1,000 times your money. It's currently Boostober on Underdog where there's a promo to play nearly every day. Underdog is literally giving you unlimited profit boost to make basketball picks. Underdog is the best place to pick them, so sign up and deposit now using the promo code SCRAM to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. All you got to do is select higher or lower on your favorite players and cash in Underdog. Must be 18 plus. 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska. 19 plus in Colorado for some games. 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona. And present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 533 in New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY to 467-369. This episode is brought to you by Honda. When you test drive the new Prologue EV, there's a lot that could impress you about it. There's the class-leading passenger space, the clean, thoughtful design, and the intuitive technology. 
But out of everything, what you'll really love most is that it's a Honda. Visit honda.com slash EV to see offers. All right. So I kind of mentioned watching the playoffs. I got to bring this up. We touched on it a little bit yesterday with Monday Night Sports Talk. Can you recall a better weekend of sports viewing just, oh, just locally than last weekend? Where It was pretty incredible. I mean, honest to God. So you go from, okay, yeah, obviously the Vikings get the big victory in London on Sunday morning, which mm. I want to get to in a second. But the Gopher ga- the Gophers actually drew me in. And you're, you, you can say we. Because you, you, yep. you're a proud member of the Golden Gopher Nation, I am. That was a lot of fun to watch, and the, and I had friends that were there with their kids and stuff. It was cool, man. It was a really fun day, a fun weekend. earlier during the day. I'd asked my wife. I said, "Hey, do you want to go to the Gopher game? It would be, <gasps> it's beautiful outside. It we can, um, you know, it's a late start, so we can walk around." She said, "She said to me, because it's a late start, I don't want to go because people will be drinking super hard, and it's going to be a long night." And I thought. Man, and just think how great that game would have been. So how incredible that would have been. Although I would have never stayed till the end. I uh, have a friend, a neighbor, uh, Jason, buddy of mine. Mm-hmm. He left at halftime. He left at halftime to yeah. beat the traffic. Oh. And he said, "Yeah, I got to listen to the rest of it on the radio. Uh, you know, on the radio, listen to the Grimmer on the way home." And I thought, "You left the game at halftime. Like, why even go? Why? Why? Do you, why even bother going then?" Although, it was but if he lives down by you, he's got like a two-hour ride home. Well, and that's just down. it. And I mean, you know, we, you know, we work what just down the street from from campus, mm-hmm. and it is there's a different level of congestion because it is an absolute nightmare to try to leave a Gopher football game. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. It, on a Saturday afternoon, it's probably not that bad, but at night with all the kids that are out in Dinky Town and whatnot, oh my, I it, it would have been just. A nightmare to try to get out of there. I, I mean, remember. Think of this. Go ahead. Go. I, I just wanted to play this out. The week before, we almost beat Michigan. Correct. Yeah, we got right? screwed I mean, by just, the refs. We just got screwed. I mean, if you think of that, we could have had Michigan one weekend, USC the next weekend. We would have been looking at that bald wonder totally differently than we do now. Every time Oof. he runs and he runs into the the locker room and jumps on his guys like you love me don't you i just think it's so weirdly self-serving it's I not only if those 18 year old kids think it's weird I, not only is it weirdly self-serving it's just so freaking desperate it's desperate so? of boy look at me my players love me and i just and that's and the thing is i think he's a good coach it's just that's the kind of crap i can't stand it it, it Again, whatever. If we're going to go down that road, I, you're, you're going to get me going for like an hour. <laughs> but I just, that, that's the part I don't get it because at least this is how I've always viewed it. When you're a coach, it, you, you, you can't make any moment specifically about yourself, right? That's kind of the number one job. Your, your, your job is to put, you know, essentially kids in the correct position for the best possible chance to succeed. That's I how I view it that. anyway. And, right? I, yeah, and I'm saying he does yeah. do that. He is a good coach, but it's just those little things that drive me nuts that make that, that irritate the crap out of me. But again, some people love it. And you know, when you're trying to build a team and cater to 18 to 23 year olds, that's probably what they want to hear or want to see or want to be a part of. And that's fine. You he's know, you don't need to, right. you don't need to I, satisfy a guy right. in his mid forties, right? You don't need to no. do that. That's, that's fine. Um, no, but if a guy ran and jumped into my arms after we won something in business, I'd be like, what's, what just happened what are we here? Doing here? Did, you, did you just jump? <laughs> I'm, I accidentally touched your high thigh as you jumped into the air. Right. I'm calling HR. I think that would be, it would be a pretty quick end to that. So, um, we, we, we get up early to go to, to watch the Vikings game and, the one of the baseball uh, squads that I'm associated with does a cool like they'll they'll grill burgers and stuff at at the ballpark for the Vikings games, and they said, "Hey, we're gonna do breakfast for the Vikings game on Sunday," and I respond with, "Are you serious? It's gonna be like 48 degrees outside." I'm like, oh, oh come on, it'll be fun. We'll have the we'll have the beers going. Oh, well, hey, I'm not having a Coors Light at 8:30 in the morning on a on a Sunday, mm-hmm. um, but anyway, but it was great. We had we had breakfast on the on the grill and stuff like that. But then, you know, and then we had to we had to leave at halftime to go to church, and my little guys just kind of look at me going, "Dad, I'm freezing." I said, "I know, I know. We're 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 leaving soon, buddy. Don't worry about it." But it was uh, it was fun. I I don't know that I can. It's fun to do it once in a while, but they're when they're talking about having a team 
actually play in London, like a, a, a franchise. Mm-hmm. Sure. Can you imagine having to get up at eight in the morning? Or in some cases, let's say your 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 team is the uh, the the Chargers, right? The Chargers are on the West Coast. That yeah. game started at six thirty in the morning in L.A. I would love it. Would you Absolutely really? It. Oh, it would be totally ideal for me. If I could, I would watch every single game if I could be done with it by eleven o'clock in the morning. That's what sucks about football is it takes your be- – what a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. Sure. Yep. People sat on their ass for six hours from <laughs> noon to six and then watched the Sunday night game. Today, they, you know, that day they watched the Vikings game at 830. Probably didn't finish till 11 o'clock at night. It's, it is – that's what I love about F1, Formula One, is the races are mainly European, so they start Sunday morning at 8 o'clock or 730, right, mm-hmm. or 7 or 8 or 9, you know, really early. I love getting out of the way. I took I went to the took the wife to the bar and we went to the bar and watched the Vikings game for a little bit. We also had breakfast, right? That sure. was our whole thing. Yep. And it, it was kind of funny because I, I dropped her off and the bar was packed. This this local place called Gallagher's. It's in like West St. Paul and it's okay. a dive bar. It's a it's an old school dive bar where they have like um you know two dollar burgers one night, right? It's it's cheap and it, and it's a bar bar. And um I dropped her off and the, the parking lot was packed. She goes, Oh yeah, there's plenty of room in there. So I go sit down and she brings us into this side, this ancillary side room with like a 11 by 14 TV up in the corner. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm like, we're not really going to be able to see that. But they were so busy that that's what we took. And I was glad to take it. It was fun. Okay. It was was, I I did not post that on the frat pack because I had been going to such crappy restaurants recently that I thought I don't want the frat pack to only think. I eat at just total dive restaurants. <laughs> I, I, I want them to know that occasionally I go to nice restaurants, but it's like every restaurant I've been going to lately had been a dive bar. Sure. I was like, I only do dive bars six times a week, right. not seven. Not times seven, a week. right. You, yeah. you got to class it up one day of the week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before we get to the frat pack, I got to share this tweet with you before I forget. Um, it's from a guy by the name of Ryan Castellanos, and I know you have no idea who he is. And I didn't either until he tweeted this out. They say hitting a baseball is the hardest thing to do, right? In sports, isn't that the common thread, mm-hmm. Michael? The hardest yeah. thing to do. They say the hard, They say hitting a baseball is the hardest thing to do. But let me tell you, trying to bartend when your brother ties the game with a home run in the NLDS is not too far behind. His brother is Nick, who's an outfielder for the cool. Phillies, and hit the game-tying home run against the Mets the other day. I just thought... That is such a fantastic tweet. I have to repost that. That would Could be you imagine cool. You're bartending and your brother just ties the game with a bomb. Like that would be the coolest thing ever. And the worst part was, is this kid, the bartender was probably a great baseball player too. Right. Probably played in college. Right? Sure. He was just one fraction of one second too slow yeah. or just not powerful enough. He's like, why could that not be me? It's kind of <laughs> like LeBron James and his son. Oh, right? You God. can see that that Bronny is just a speckle of what LeBron is, oh. but LeBron has the power to bring Bronny up. Can, did you watch any of that Bronny game? I did not, and I'm going to tell or you. Did you get the right stats now. from it? Did he did he do anything great? I I, I there was turnovers. can't tell you how much I have had a bipolar relationship as a fan with LeBron James, and I'm going to tell you why. I was you know because he keep in mind he was drafted in 2006. That's right, a long time ago. that's a long freaking time ago. Okay, or wait, was it 03? No, it might have been 03. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. It was 03, not 06, because he was the number one pick. And I remember when he was drafted because I was still 03, living. You are right. Yeah, it was. It, I was still living in an apartment in South Minneapolis. Well, in any event, how do you remember that? I don't know. I'm weird like that. I, I remember. That is weird. I remember when, because I thought, oh, the Timberwolves might get the number No, they're not going to get the number one pick. But I remember our but, my, me and my buddies were watching the draft that night when he was picked and we were living in South Minneapolis. In any of it, I was a huge fan you know, of him as a player. But then as he's become obviously more outspoken and he's basically wanted to become pseudo GM on every team that he's ever played mm-hmm. for. And then the fact that he and his agent, I don't know if you know this, he and his agent told every other team in the NBA, if you draft Bronny, we will never do business with you again. And his really? agent, you know, it's kind of a big, a big deal. Sure. And I just thought you're manipulating the system for your son, for your son that isn't even a good college basketball player, let alone an NBA player. And I just what I, an easy thing to say yes to. They are like, absolutely, we well, will for do sure. the world's largest favor and not draft Bronny James, who probably shouldn't even be in the G League, let alone the yeah, NBA. Yeah. So I I can't tell you how turned off I am by that entire story. I just simply 
don't care. And I, and it, and I feel bad because the thing is, this is all driven by him. This poor kid didn't ask for this. I mean, sure, he's going to end up having a quote unquote career because of it, but that's just, you're, you're not doing this kid any favors. So, how long do you think he'll play as a professional basketball player? He if his will dad be, wasn't on He the team? will be done playing the second that LeBron James retires. You think so? A hundred percent. Okay. Did did he not have a stat line yesterday? Did anything I, good happen? I I honestly, Mike, I until you mentioned it, I didn't even know they played because I know oh, the really? Wolves. It the was Wolves, their first time ever in NBA history. Yeah, I that just, a father and son have played on the same team. Yeah, I can't. I just simply can't tell you how turned off I am by the entire thing because I just. Again, I don't like – he's a phenomenal basketball player, and I admire his talent, but I think as a human being, he's not really my cup of tea. He's a crybaby too. Yeah. I'm not. Every time he looks like he's smelling poop, every time he gets touched, he looks like <laughs> like he's just about to burst out and crying. Right. I don't know. That 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 bugs me about him. Super talented, right? Yep. But I'd much rather watch Kobe Bryant play than LeBron James. Yeah. I And I – again, it's just – I don't even know how to phrase it properly because he's just he's just simply not my cup of tea like whatsoever. It just no. just not at all. Hey, uh, before we take another break, I got to make mention of our friends at the University of St. Thomas. They head to Indiana this Saturday on 1500 ESPN and 1500ESPN.com for a battle against Valparaiso. Yeah. That Valparaiso. The pregame is at 1230. Kickoff is at 1 on 1500 ESPN and online at 1500ESPN.com. We'll be right back. All right. I really didn't want to bring up the administration, politics, Kamala Harris, but I can't help myself. So we all know, and I I did want to talk to you uh, about uh, Hurricane Milton because I know you and your family have a connection to that area. But um, Harris, Kamala Harris called out Ron DeSantis saying that, quote, and I, I'm going to paraphrase, but she basically said that he's being selfish and utterly irresponsible for not taking her call regarding Hurricane Milton. And then hours later, DeSantis says that in, in her three and a half years in office, Harris hasn't called him once to offer assistance. And he said she has no role in this. In fact, she's been vice president for three and a half years. I've dealt with a number of stores under this administration. She has never contributed anything to these efforts. She's the first one who's trying to politicize the storm, and she's doing that just because of her campaign. I'm not the biggest Ron DeSantis fan, but mm-hmm. he's 100% right. Yeah, what do you dislike about Ron DeSantis? Um, Just a, a great executive that takes care of Florida I, better than anyone else. I think he done. governs well. I just I, I have my suspicions about him as an individual, but that's fine. Oh. I, I, but I don't I don't vote for personality. I vote for policy. You know what's nice, Rivers is I did get a call from Kamala once. Oh, and I told her a little joke, and the best part about the whole thing, it was just <laughs> oh, constant God. laughing. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Oh. How how can people live with that? Could you how imagine? Can you live can you with imagine that jackal? being trapped during the pandemic, being isolated with that every day? I would have gone yeah. insane. But I anyway, do know this. Yes, I do know this that um, I don't know what's going to happen this in this uh, election. I really don't. But I do think I personally like Hillary Clinton better than Kamala Harris. Wow. And I think a lot of people can say that. And I think the world did not want Hillary. Because she seemed unlikable. Yep. And so I, I just have that strange feeling that somebody might wake up and say, we can't do this. This 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 person can't become president. Right. Although so many people are saying that about Trump. It is a really tough, a really tough thing to mm-hmm. figure out who's going to win this election. Yeah. I don't know. Do you, do you have any prognostication? Does, does, I, uh, I think. Bruce th- Ray doesn't seem to talk about much prognostication. On no, and I, he, he, it's, it's almost a wait and see game approach with just the way he you know, doing the show. And, and I mean, honestly, we we all just want this election behind us at this point. Like, let's just yeah. get, let's just get on with this. So we can figure out, all right, are we going to be eating potatoes out of a 50 gallon drum or what, what's going on here? But <laughs> I guess the reason I wanted to bring that up is, you know, I was watching a news report this morning. It was, I was actually watching um, Fox nine and they had a national reporter that was kind of checking in with them. I forget the name of the suburb of Tampa, um, something key. I can't remember. I, I, I apologize, but it looked like a really, really nice like suburb. Siesta key or something. Something like that. Yeah. And it was beautiful homes. And sh- and and this and this woman was walking down the street. And again, this is what at that point it would have been thirty six or forty eight hours ahead of the storm that's coming. Mm-hmm. And there was already city blocks and streets lined with piles of debris 
from the previous hurricane. Um, and, and I'm thinking to, to myself, there, and I'm thinking right? to myself, well, there's going to be nothing left at the, after this thing rolls through, yeah. right? In, in parts yeah. of that state. And they have to get that debris out of there, otherwise the wind. Well, blow you don't it want everywhere. winds yeah. picking up tables and smashing into things, right? Well, it's and, super, and, super dangerous. In fact, be, uh, it's funny you say that because while she was doing her live shot in the what the the ninety second live shot she was doing, there had to have been four garbage trucks that had rolled past there because that's yeah. basically what they were doing was trying to just pick up garbage as much as they possibly can. But then, that's it, what it, I've but, heard. That's but then, doing, right? where do you bring it? I mean, where what do you do with it? I mean, yeah, I, I mean, you get it. You get it inland another ten miles, right? You get it out of the okay. storm surge and out of the wind. I mean, granted, the wind's going to hit ten miles in, but there's nothing down there, right? Ten miles in, where there's a trash dump, there's nothing by it anymore. I was watching a forecast, a, a meteorologist talking about this storm yesterday on TV, and he started crying. Oh boy! And I thought, ooh, that's not that's not a good sign when a, a meteorologist is so afraid that he starts crying. That he thinks this is going to be so damaging and so dangerous. Strangely and ironically enough, my my in-laws do live down in the Tampa area, and my mother-in-law traveled home back to Tampa yesterday wow. from our house. Wow! So I thought, oh, what? You, I'm like, are you sure you want to go this direction? I think maybe maybe your husband should come up to Minnesota instead of down to Florida. Wow! It, it seemed like a scary way to do it. I, I you know, I mean, but again. You, you got to do what you got to do. You want to try to save as much as you possibly can, correct? I mean, I, but but again, yeah, the bottom line is you can't put yourself in a harm's way. And I, I guess that was the question I was going to have for you because, again, you know, you and your family have a have an interest in that part of the country. I mean, yeah. what, do you, what do you do aside from, well, we just, we got to leave town, right? Like what do Yeah, we, there's nothing you can do, right? So we're, we're in Bonita, right, in Bonita Beach. And um, I mean, if it gets a big storm surge, we're on stilts. So if the surge isn't super huge, it will be okay. But one of the big problems down in Florida is, and, and what happens as soon as seawater gets into the elevator shafts of these bigger buildings, yeah. right? In the condo buildings, the elevator shafts have to be inspected and repaired and replaced because the seawater just chews through the components. So you can't have elevators. So it's really super expensive and it's super time consuming. And they will not let you back into your buildings if it's a taller structure because they can't get people in and out safely on the elevators. So the, during the last storm, um, not Ian, is it Ian? Yeah, last, last storm, Ian, um, it knocked out the elevators in all these buildings and it took over a year and a half to get the elevators back up and running. Wow. Right? Because just everybody who has an elevator needed it because, you know, Ian just pushed salt water down into the system. So it's the corrosion and the corrosiveness of the salt water. Granted, where we were in Benita, I mean, the whole buildings, all the stucco was ripped off buildings. And, you know, it didn't, the building wasn't going to tip over, but it, it surely wasn't in, you know, all the landscaping, all the pools were just totally filled with, with sand. I mean, you couldn't even tell there was pools there anymore. And they just looked like dunes. And I'm hoping that that doesn't happen again because that really slows down the enjoyment of Florida. I'm well, and, and that's what I was going to say next because I know when we were down there uh, a year ago, March, so about a year and a half ago, there was still, I mean, when we went to Fort Myers, right, for spring training, mm -hmm. and and, yeah. and there were so many parts that still had not recovered yet. And I'm thinking, oh, no. okay, well, now they just had two other where they're about to have a second major hurricane go through there. Mm -hmm. I mean, is this is this a case where – Places will literally just never recover. I, I think I, I personally think this uh, so close, right? I think some people might make the decision to leave, but so many people are moving to Florida Reavers. So many people that it kind of cycles the people who had a smaller bungalow, those Fort Myers bungalows, those are just gone, right? Sure. All those on ground level bungalows are just gone. And now they're all on stilts little mega mansions at 2 million bucks a piece, even down the frontage roads, right? Not on the beach. And it just, it just gave people who can build a category four or five weather resistant house, a new lot. Right. And it's, it, it kind of turned the community a little bit, which sucks because you lose a lot of that local flavor yeah. of who was there and the school teachers can't live by the schools anymore. And the cops can't live by where their office is. And the guy who runs the donut stand has to live, 30 minutes away. I mean, it just is not fun. Yeah. It's, I really am praying for them because this sounds like another, I mean, maybe a storm even greater than, than Helene. And it just sounds really terrifying. Yeah. The, the one nice thing is, is you have had 72 hours of this is coming to get you. Right. 
you start driving up the coast or driving south or dri driving out of the out of the the area where it's going to get hit because you got a chance to outrun it if you leave now mm -hmm. but that's easy that you know maybe you and i could do that but if you had 47 bucks in your checking account you're sol right right well, i mean it, it would be very very difficult to run outrun this if you don't have a good car you don't have gas money or you don't you know any, any of that it's really really terrifying for people well and it was it's it's so like this morning because my wife was working from home and we were talking because we, you know we got the kids in the bus and we came home and then i had i had the news on and i said could you even imagine just saying okay we got to have enough room for the boys uh, i guess we have to bring the stupid cats with us mm. but but just putting stuff in an SUV and saying, all right, well, we're going to hope for the best here. Like, I just couldn't even imagine that scenario playing out. Yeah, um, FYI, leave the cats. They'll make it. Oh, no, I right? would. I, I, <laughs> the, I, I would. The cats are going to make it. No, uh, um, yeah, it would be. And then you'd want to grab something of importance, like, oh, we need to get all of our documentation for our home. Right. We need to get our insurance policies. We need to get our some statements. Oh, by the way, what about these pictures and the wedding dress? And, you know, all of that stuff is just gone. It's just gone if you don't take it and, and run. Right. Yep. And it's just, ugh, I, I could not get my household down to one uh, SUV and I'm lucky to have an SUV. Right. 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 It just, it wouldn't work. So let's just, let's keep them in. I know this seems like a empty thing, thoughts and prayers, but that's all we can give them till we know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's just, it's just a horrific situation. So just God bless everyone. That's uh that's trying to fight, you know, out there because I, I couldn't imagine. And, and uh, my, as Mike said, thoughts and prayers for all of you. So uh, let's bring up the Frat Pack uh, 5000. I want to point to a specific photo from our buddy Ben, um, you know, Ben, maple yep. syrup Ben, uh, making all the seasonings. He checked in from Juneau, Alaska yesterday. And it's weird because I have a good friend that was stationed uh, in Juneau a couple of years ago, and he absolutely loved it. But he's a big-time outdoors guy. And I've always thought, I want to go to Alaska sometime. But I don't know that it would be for me. The views are amazing, right? The, and you you yeah. always have to pick the right time of the year to go because you're either there when it's you know dark out 22 hours a day or light out 22 hours a day or whatever that scenario is. So you got to pick the right time to go there. But, man, his photos are so cool on the website, on the Frat Pack 5000. So I did ask you a question, but the beauty of podcasting is when your partner's connection goes out via the Zoom link, you can pause the the recording and then just dial him up on his, tel on his cell phone. So thanks for bearing with us for those last seconds. Go ahead. That dead air you would have experienced if I went to Ben on this call. Right? Correct. Correct. You would have just been sitting there wondering what to talk about. But I did want to say one more thing. Sure. And it's very important, and I mean it wholeheartedly. Reavers. You're the best. Thank you, Michael. Uh, and again, if you haven't done so yet, join the Frat Pack 5000. All you got to do is send Mike a friend request, and you're going to join all sorts of cool and fun people that are on there, including, I want to make mention of Chris. Uh, she introduced herself that her and her husband, Scott, are in the Glendale, Arizona area, and they're looking for any Frat Packers that are going to be in the area to watch uh, this Saturday's go for football game. Wait, aren't, oh, they're in. That's right. That's a quick drive over to go to, to the Rose Bowl. Anyway, so check them out on the Frat Pack 5000 via the Facebook page. Uh, and also, please do us a favor, rate and review the show wherever you happen to be listening to the Weekly Scramble. It helps other people find the show, and it helps us out as well. His name is Mike Fredoloni with Fredoloni's Hardware and Garden Stores. My name is Chris Reavers. We will talk to you again next week. And until then, everyone, cheers.